that they need to be surrounded by men they can trust or mm -hmm. women they can trust and that have something that they can bring to the table to help complete the picture in a good way. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now we have it for the individual. Now we have it for your emotional well-being, for your masculine development to grow you up, grow me up, grow me up in a good way. So I would take the, then the first step, if someone who enters this process, the, the new journey, I guess, what you would call it. It's the new warrior training adventure. Is, new warrior training. the first entry okay. for most men. Um, so they have to uh, acknowledge what's missing, right? I take it that's the first step. No, that's, or that's, discover what's missing? No, they may not, uh, but I call it, it's the call. Something says, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting out of life. That's the, that's the call. Uh, and um, what we say, the new warrior is the warrior for the battle. The old warrior wore out and slay dragons. The new warrior slays the dragons. The in internal here. dragons. Yeah, in here. Um, so in new warrior training, our training is to show men as best as we know how to model for them how to go after those inner demons, to expand that world. And we do it in the form of an adventure. Such as? The weekends that we do. Mm -hmm. and, and they're somewhat modeled after the heroic journeys of the um, mythopoetic, which is, a, there's, you can relate to a Star Wars adventure, right? A young man gets the call. Oh, the queen is being, being held captured. captive. Right. right. That's the call, the refusal of the call. But I'll have to leave my parents behind, and they're ailing, and I'll have to leave the farm. I can't go. That's the first thing, and we all know this part in our lives, right, where I need to make this next step, or I need to finally get it together. For every man, it's different. For every part of life, it's different. Mm -hmm. So to say typic, what's typical, it's as broad as, but the call, is, the call is the same. Something isn't happening, or I don't have the courage, or I, I haven't dealt with this, or it's about time, right? Or I have no clue. <laughs> Maybe I have no clue. Well, I think we all, all of us find ourselves <laughs> in that position more often I don't than know. Like. Someone, um, so that's the call. The refusal of the call is, oh, I can't, I'm busy, you know, and this sort of thing. So the, the adventure part of this is to make the call for the man. So my part mostly is when I meet men for the organization is to help them recognize the call uh, so in their lives. Is that part of the, this weekend, the New Warrior weekend, mm -hmm. to, to recognize the call? And so, if I understand it correctly, the call is this thing that you would like to do. You as a person, you're thinking, look, I, I, I want to be this other thing, or I want to get to this right. other place Or rid myself. myself of this, or any, okay. any number of... And for whatever reason, break I'm not... Break this pattern, or... Right, yeah. and I'm not making progress in I'm that not direction. i progress. Okay. Or, or I want to venture into something and I'm clueless. Something that seems appealing. Now, in that case... You know, there's a lot of things, a lot of times we could look at something and say, well, that, that was, well, that was pretty interesting. Uh, but that may or may not be a good path for you. And so in this mm -hmm. case, is that part of that discovery process as well? Like if I were to say, you know, I've got this place I want to be, well, why do you want to be there? Why do you think that's a good fit for you? Is that the kind of thing that, that goes on? It wouldn't follow that course, but it would say, um, I have a dream for me, right? So you want to be the next Oprah, Kevin. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful, and that's a grandiose, and it's a wonderful thing, and that may be so. Um, and as long as you're progressing towards that in, in, a, in, a, in a way that you're not getting in your own way, um, you're doing great. Uh, but if you, if you come saying, I am keep on undermining this somehow, I find myself not going there, and I have mm -hmm. this vision for myself, yet I'm, I undercut myself. There's always something in the way. Now we're on to something. Hmm. Now, how does it reconcile with the idea of, um, of failure, which is a normal part of life? And, and in mm -hmm. fact, I know from my own experience that those are the most educational experiences I've had. You know, yeah. I, something that I really put a lot of heart and soul into, it just didn't turn out. Um, and it, it, as, again, going back to my business experience, uh, the great successes are, are not very educational because you don't really know why you succeeded. But when you fail, you can usually find a pretty good, you know, it's not too hard to figure out, okay, what went wrong here? Yeah. What did I do that got me to that spot? Uh, so how do you parlay that role of the importance of, of failure um, into this idea that, that people may be stuck or they may not be where they want to be? Um, I work through it through um, myself by helping men paint a picture of 
another mytho poetic story that's wonderful around a young man that goes off with a wild man in the forest, and the wild man gives him three tasks. And, to, and the short story is, is the fact that you took it on is a success, not that you succeeded. You can start to understand, all of us understand, that it's about having the courage to take the step, not getting there is the big thing. It's really having the courage to take that step. Because once that step is taken, the rest of it seems that dominoes fall in place. It's the being frozen from taking the step that is really more crucial than the outcome. Uh, Your ability to keep taking a step, the risk, take the risk. Having the courage to take that risk and that, and that relationship, to take that risk in your business. Take that risk of being made a fool or feeling fool or feeling like a failure. It's more about what's more broad than that. It may show up there most often, but it's usually a broader taking a risk question. Interesting, and we, especially coming out of the financial crisis where people took a whole bunch of risks that they just didn't understand. Um, so mm -hmm. is that part of the process as well? I mean, taking risk, as we know, taking risks is, is very scary. Yeah. And there are some risks that should not be undertaken. Uh, and there's, um, in fact, having spent time in the financial industry myself, there's a whole uh, discipline of studying risk and now they try to quantify it and they're talking about financial risk in particular but mm -hmm. um, the idea of, uh, of risk and the understanding of what risk really is uh, is central to that discipline and that study and that what we see in cases like the financial crisis mm -hmm. the risks were, were drastically misunderstood yeah. uh, and the, the, the people who were taking them had no idea of the potential consequences mm -hmm. so coming back to the personal level we would encourage people to take risks, mm -hmm. but how do you evaluate what the risk really is? What kind of tools are brought to bear to really measure that and understand what this risk is? Um, if you want to keep it in the financial realm, the, the next question for an individual in that situation is, will they risk again? <laughs> lot of, well, and some of them <laughs> said right? yes, and John Corzine comes to mind, <laughs> failed <laughs> miserably the second time around as well. Yeah. And, and, and I'm more, my, for, for, for me, Glenn, I'm more uh, concerned with the man's ability to say, yes, I have been hurt by this, whether it's relationship or money, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And am I willing to examine that? What do I need to learn from that? And then from that information, am I, am I, do I have the courage again to risk again? You know, you know, what have I learned? Uh, and and so have I learned to accept the fact that the risk may end up, there is a risk that I will be hurt somehow badly by this, perhaps. Take it to the extreme, there's actually a risk if you do, and there's a risk if you don't. So right. the risk of, of inaction. Yeah, has its, own, has its own impact on your life and everything else. And so most, as we call them, dilemmas, mm -hmm. real dilemmas of life, is that basically, I can get hurt if I do, I can get hurt if I don't. And this is very, and this is paralyzing for, for, for many of us. So how do you get past that paralysis? I mean, if I've got risks on either side, mm -hmm. how do you get mm -hmm. past that? That seems like a stopping point. How do you it work past It is a stopping point. <laughs> that is a big stopping point. And this is only a tiny fragment. You can see how mm -hmm. many situations and uh, go on throughout mm -hmm. uh, this, this new warrior mm -hmm. right, discovery process for us. <coughs> um, how do you get past that? We have trainings around this, and we actually explore these two and measure our, if you're willing to live with not of an action and the impact it's going to have on you, mm -hmm. the consequences, the impact and the consequences. And if you're willing to accept those, stay with your inaction. But, if that, but recognize what they are first, yeah, right? Yeah, right. What's the impact and the consequences mm -hmm. of that decision? Let's go there. Well, and that's a very interesting way to phrase it as well, because um, indecision is itself a decision. <laughs> Right? You're making the decision not to act, whether you acknowledge it or not. Yeah. Yeah. That's really what's happening. Right. right? And so as we want to talk to a little bit earlier, am I, am I undermining what I really could be doing with my, for myself? See how it ties into mm -hmm. the other thing about undermining my plan, where it really feels safer. Uh, the known is always safer than the unknown. Right, right. right. And so my request is not to solve this for you. I'm not rescuing you rescuing men. Mm -hmm. I'm here to make it clear. This is what's presented to you. Let's, if you tell me that this is a dilemma, here, let's explore the consequences of the inaction. Is it truly what you want? 
or are, are you undermining that in order to, because this seems more scarier to take the risk, right? Right. But if that's truly what you know, what you're called to do, the calling, right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> right. right? You, you're tying these pieces together. If, the, if that's a calling for you and you know it's safer here and you know you're, you're undermining it, then let's get to the bottom of why you're doing that. What decision? Well, I would stop happening? and ask you, do you want to go there? Oh, uh, you, would, you would ask and say, all right, this, this thing that you've painted, this vision, mm -hmm. there's some reason you don't want to go there. Well, it's scary. So let's, so is it, but is it just, if it's just fear, all of us struggle with overcoming fear, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something that can be attacked. But do you also examine, for example, maybe there's some real reason why you've painted this picture, but there may be part of you that knows, I wouldn't want to be there. Well, on a secondary level, I would also say, is this a pattern in your life? If it's a single incident because you need to do something profoundly risky one time, well, that's, that's normal. But if you find yourself repeatedly at least mm -hmm. selling yourself out, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. on uh, time after time again, say, well, that's, there's an underlying cause, of course, to that. And if you want to go to that fear piece and open it up, mm -hmm. this is a safe place. And if you don't know what it is, let's work on that languaging of that, you know, and then at the end of those kind of processes, if now you are actually conscious of the choice you're making. From now on, you will choose to be, say, victim versus hero well, in well, your own life or something. But we, I would hope most people would not choose to be a victim. That's, You'd be uh, surprised. Once, once, yeah. But once it's labeled li like this, mm -hmm. if that be the case, right? if that be the case, then you're, it's going to be hard to complain in the group of men anymore that you don't get what's going on. Ah, right, because now you've, you've acknowledged that, that this is what's really happening and I'm making happening. these conscious and I'm, choices. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm choosing this, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm comfortable with that right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And but that if, seems reasonable. It is. Yeah. It is. But if I say I want to work on this and I'm constantly bringing it to, say, you know, my group of men, uh, eventually they're going to say, you've you got to take responsibility, Glenn, to be accountable to the impact of your behaviors in your own life. Okay, and that's how we started the conversation about accountability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that any choice you make has ramifications for you and mm -hmm. the people around you, and it's that recognition of what those are. Is that what we're getting to with the accountability? Recognition mm -hmm. and acceptance. That I'm taking responsibility for the impact of my decisions. And that it's not some outside force. It's me it's making me. these decisions. Right. And I ask you as a man in my circle, to not let me off the hook for take my, me, my taking my personal responsibility for the impact of my decision to have an action. Well, then I'm not going to let you off the hook for making the decision to come here and talk to us tonight because it's been fascinating. And believe it or not, we're out of time already. So, Glenn, <laughs> I want to thank you so much for being my guest. It's a very interesting topic. I hope you come back again. Very good. Thank you. I'd be glad to. And thank you for joining us once again for Public Perspective. I'm your host, Kevin McDermott.